Hey guys, welcome back for another video. So I am seriously contemplating a subwoofer upgrade once again. But this time it is the first time that I'm not trying to solve a problem. I'm not trying to add extension or even add volume. I have these two SVS SB16s and absolutely love them. They sound great. They perform admirably. Plenty of volume for watching my movies and music at max volume. I love the extension. Low teens before it starts to drop off. But the one thing it's missing, and it's not any fault of these subwoofers, is impact. This is unfortunately a terrible room. It is so open. I have no corners for the subs. I have hallways. I have openings to the kitchen. You just can't pressurize the room. And you can see the subs have to go in weird positions. These are the only two positions in the room where I get a good frequency response. And yes, I've tried them in all the different kinds of combinations and positions. This is where subs need to go in this room. And in these two positions, you know what? The response is great. Seriously, I have no problem. But to get pressure, to get that feeling of the subs, you need two things. You either have to run what you've got and turn it up, which I don't like to do. I don't like to run everything at max volume. I want to feel stuff at lower volumes. Or you need to add surface area, more subs or bigger subs or a combination thereof. I have a little eight inch ported sub, nothing special in my office, just for listening to music and playing games. And because it's only two feet away from me, I get more feeling and pounding in the chest from that little thing at moderate volumes than I do in this living room. So I just need more pressure. Now I'm considering a few different options. I've got it boiled down to a short list right now and first of all i have greatly limited myself by eliminating ported subs i prefer the sealed sound i am very well aware that i am chopping off a lot of headroom by not going to ported and if i was only doing home theater if i didn't care about music that would be fine i would go ported and boom problem solved plenty of doors opening but limiting myself to sealed and also having space constraints because this sub over here I've got a max width, 20, 21 inches maximum, or it starts to encroach on the walkway into the bedroom, and that's just ghetto. So not doing anything like that. It's perfect the way it is, nice and even with the wall, no problem. My three choices right now, JTR, they have a single sealed 18, and it's, it's fairly expensive. With shipping, you're right around six and a half, seven thousand, somewhere in there. I don't remember, I'm not seriously considering it because I don't like the way it looks. I'm not a fan of the DIY look or the PA speaker look or the made for dedicated or behind the scenes type look. And I'm also not a DIY guy, I wish I was. But I, I'm, you know the old saying, measure twice, cut once. I measure twice, cut five times. I'm just not a carpenter. I can do a lot of things great, but there are some things that I do really poorly. Carpentry is one of them, so I'm not even considering DIY solutions. I know that, yeah, I could get some great performance out of maybe quad DIY 18s. That would be really cool. Also, right now, you can't buy any amps. There are, like, no NX3000 or 6000s in existence. Anyway, so that's one option. I mean, it would probably work, and that would be for dual 18s. They do have a quad 18 solution, but it's priced ridiculously compared to the competition. So another option is going with Seton with their uh, F2s. Now, the one drawback to that is, and it, it just comes down to price and value, I'm sure they perform admirably. We're talking quad 15s at this point, and all four point forward. So that would be great. Basically like stacking four of what I have or like buying two more SB16s. And these are really 15s. I know they say they're 16, but they're not, they're 15s. So and I guess that would be an option if I really didn't care about money. I would spend another, you know, whatever, 32, 3,500 and buy two more SB16s, but that's a dumb decision. So the only problem going the Seton route is they're designed to have a slave subwoofer, a non-powered, running off of a powered one, a plus unit. And the problem there is they don't have separate phase or delay controls. 
and I need that in this room. Now, if this were a normal room, rectangular, square, whatever, and I could place the speakers along the same room and they had the same response, that would be fine, but I don't. Unfortunately, the way this room is completely asymmetrical, I do need to run a delay on one sub versus the other just to couple them to get them to sum correctly. So I do need completely separate control. Now, there are several options I could do with the F2s. I talked to the owner, Mark, and one option is, of course, just to buy two completely powered units. That would work, I mean, flawlessly. And the only drawback there is the price because unfortunately they're designed to kind of be bought in the powered and non-powered pair. And that's priced equivalent to the competition. But having to put two active on there, you're about $1,000 over some of the other competition that is arguably probably better. The other solution would be he has a couple different amp options. You can go with a lower powered amp and put that in both of them. And that would save you about $1,000. But again, you're killing your performance and the whole idea is more performance. So I'm not at all interested in that. He also has the option of special ordering the big amp, but without the slave connection. And that would save a few hundred. My biggest concern with either one of those options is resale. Okay, I, I would like to say that these are going to be my last subs ever, but realistically, no. When I go to resell them, if they're not the normal model that someone's looking for from them, I think that's going to hurt resale chances, certainly dollar value. But more than likely, you know, if somebody's looking for an F2 sub, they're going to expect to have that slave connection. So my only real consideration would be two full featured powered units. And uh, that is definitely on the expensive side. My last choice, and probably the one I'm gonna go with, but I need to test something first, hence this video, and you probably guessed it, the PSA 32, 32? No, PSA 3602s. Sorry, all these numbers start to run together. Dual 18s, opposing drivers, they're not facing the front, so that's kind of a negative for placement at least, and looks. I would prefer it taller with both of them on front, like the Seton, but these have the drivers on opposing sides and the amp on one side. And of course you can turn it either way to put the amp on the left or the right. That has great performance as well. Not quite as much power as the Seton and the amp, but a lot more surface area. Dual 18s is quite a bit more than dual 15s as far as surface area. So that's very appealing. Chart-wise, performance-wise, I think they would be pretty darn similar. So what I need to find out is, does the orientation of the driver matter? Right now, mine are facing forward. So what I'm gonna do is fire up REW, I'm gonna turn off one sub at a time, and then test each sub with the driver in each four directions. And we're gonna compare them. I don't care what the response is, it's gonna be crappy because it's gonna be one sub versus both subs. But what we're looking for is how, if at all, does the frequency response change with that driver going from front, back, left to right? If it doesn't make a difference, yay. I mean, number one, that means you can point your sub any way you want. But number two, it means the 3602s are actually viable. Or is it 12? 3612, I think it is. <laughs> anyway, let's get to testing. Okay, ready to measure. Again, we're not looking for a pretty chart, just changes to it. I'm going to do one sub at a time. We'll start with that one over there. I got furniture sliders on it. So I'll just take a front, side, side, back measurement. Do the same for the left. Just the sub signals on, nothing else. So let's take a look at the results. Here is the right sub with the driver facing forward. This is our baseline. And remember, this is one sub on only, nothing else in the room. This is a sweep from 10 to 200. So Let's see what facing it to the left does. And this is the left, the highlighted line. It's a little bit better, really a, a minor change, probably not noticeable, so that's just fine. We're just making sure it's not worse. This highlighted is facing to the rear, so even a little bit better still. Okay, that's good. Front and rear would be a good combo so far. And then we have facing the right. Now this is 
firing straight down the hallway and we're starting to get a null there about 54 hertz and uh, the rest it's uh, a mixed bag so left and right not the best combo for the right but front and rear completely viable so here's our baseline for the left subwoofer facing forward and here we are with the highlighted facing left pretty good it's better just about across the board some parts would definitely be noticeable at least and the rest pretty much the same so that's fine and here the highlighted is facing the rear again uh, an improvement pretty much everywhere got a little bit of a null starting about 92 db or hertz i should say um but overall probably a little bit noticeable a little bit of a nice bump there starting in the upper base so that's viable and then firing to the right surprisingly a big boost in the upper base and everything else pretty much the same so again a, a pretty viable combination here i could go either way front and rear or left and right so to the point of this video if i were to do the 36 12s with the drivers facing the front and the rear this is not the exact response i would get from those obviously but the difference is between all four of those positions and you can see it's pretty consistent the minor changes in there easily eq'd and i don't see any big problem with doing so i just wanted to make sure that facing it to one side versus the other didn't just kill overall performance i think what we can take away from this is in a normal room certainly but even in a weird room like this you really don't have to worry about the driver orientation what angle you're putting it at towards the listening position so it comes down to aesthetics that's it hope it helps see you next time